Okay, here is an original Miller Bessie routine. Okay, and I'll add a link in the description below to Warner Miller's original version of this. He calls it Line Dancer. Now, in this modified version, I call it Swing Dancer. And it's for the simple reason that the dancers are going to be switching partners throughout this entire thing. So what we need is we need two equal size piles decided by the spectator. So maybe they'll go five and five. That's fine. Okay. So two piles of five. That's fine. But any number, as long as it's the same number for each pile. Uh, same thing here. Maybe we'll do piles of three, but you can do whatever number of cards you would like, as long as they're the same between these piles. Now the spectator needs to point to either one of these piles here. Maybe they'll point to this one. Now this top card will be them as a swing dancer. So this is the card they need to remember. Now as the performer, I would not see this. Okay, so spectators card to remember is the six of hearts. They just set it back down and then bury it underneath the other set of five. Similarly, they're free to select the top card of either one of these piles and flip it face up. Okay, so maybe they'll choose this one. Now this card is going to represent me, the performer, as a swing dancer. Okay, and then go ahead and have the spectator bury my card underneath the other packet of four, three. And now the spectator is free to stack these in either order. Maybe they want the bigger one on the smaller one. That's fine. Okay. Now, um, since we very much know where the cards are, why don't we go ahead and perform um, some cuts. This is actually a Charlier shuffle. I can add a link in the description below um, to this shuffle. It's a great way to mix the cards. Or if you want the spectator to just randomly cut the cards and complete the cut at any location, that would be fine as well. Now within swing dancing, partners or dancers are switching partners all the time. So let's do some partners swapping or switching here. I'm going to take the top and bottom cards off as one. So that's a new pair of dancers. Another one another one so they very much have switched partners from where they were and then we'll go like this this is just the klondike shuffle and then final pair right there um why don't we continue our switching of partners i'm just dealing into two piles with random stacking decided by the spectator that's important maybe they want left on right okay so throughout the dance partners can be switched as many times as the spectator asks for. So maybe they want right on left. So you can do this left right dealing as many times as the spectator desires. You truly can. Okay. Maybe they want right on left. Okay. So once the spectator is content that the cards are beyond the knowledge of anyone and that the swing dancers have switched partners several times, all we're going to do now is we're going to take the top and bottom dancer, bring them together like this. So we're creating new pairs of swing dancers, just like this. This one can go there, this one can go there, and this one can go here. Okay, boy, you would think that after all of that randomization of the cards representing the unpredictable swapping of partners within this swing dancing performance, we could not possibly know anything about where your card is or where you are as a swing dancer. Now I know where I am, I'm right here. You designated me as the ace of hearts as a swing dancer. Okay, so what I need you to do is tell me if you see yourself in any of these other partners. Okay, so are you in there? No? Okay. Let me check here. No? Okay. There. Nope. You're not in that pair. How about that pair? Nope. What about these two swing dancers? Are you either? No, neither one of those. Okay, we're running out of cards, guys. <laughs> are you surely you're one of these? No? Okay, here's the final one. Okay, so you're telling me, <laughs> I hope you remember your card. 
or the card that's representing you as a swing dancer. So you're telling me that you're not found anywhere here face up. Okay, that's just impossible to believe because there's only one card still to be revealed. And it is the six of hearts. <laughs> and you say that's you? Oh boy. There must be a real affinity between the two of us when it comes to swing dancing. That is amazing. Okay, so how does this work? Well, you do everything that I did. Okay, um, so it is true. So why don't we do four this time just to switch the number. Maybe we'll do three still here. Okay, so packets of four, packets of three. Uh, let me just explain a little bit of the mathematics and tie it in with principles on the absolute math magic channel because it involves cyclic packets, in particular two cycles, and mirrored packets, which also brings in the stay stack principle. Okay, so if you remember, spectator remembers the top card as a swing dancer. Okay, now we'll have it face up for the tutorial portion, just so that we can see what's going on. Okay, and then they bury it. They're free to flip either one face up. Okay, so it looks like I'm the nine of diamonds as a performer. You are the 10 of hearts, if I remember, right? Okay, and then we buried that one. That's what we did. It's true that you can randomly stack these. Maybe we'll stack the smaller on the bigger this time. Now, let me show you what's going on here because it kind of unlocks everything. Our two cards are, in fact, in a cyclic relationship relative to each other. So let me just prove that to you here. So I'm going to break off seven cards here, seven cards here. Look at where our cards are within their respective cycles. So this is like cycle one, cycle two for a two cycle. So my nine of diamonds is one, two, three, fourth from the top. And you, the 10 of hearts is one, two, three, fourth from the top. So they are in a cyclic relationship. Well, when you have such a relationship, you can freely cut the cards at any location. Now it does move the cards around, but it doesn't change the fact that our two cards are in a cyclic relationship. Far more powerful, is something called the Charlie shuffle just because it's so convincing. So I'll add a link in the description below, as I mentioned. So this is a way to perform essentially a random cutting of the cards by doing all of that action. So if you want to learn how to do a Charlie shuffle, it is very much worth mastering. Okay, so since this is cyclic, on my channel, my viewers know that you can convert a two cycle in particular, a two, which is what this is. It's a two cycle with cycle length seven. You can convert it to what's called a mirrored packet. Okay, and we'll explain what that is by performing a Klondike shuffle. This is what I'm doing. I'm just taking the top and bottom cards off as one. So what has that done? Well, it's put our two cards in a mirrored relationship now. Sorry, I'm not centering things very well. Okay, so in fact, why don't we let's see? Let's, let's see if we can spread it out better there, a little bit better. Okay, now at this point, what we want to focus on, it's still sets of seven, okay, as before, but we're focused on the center here, okay? I'm just laughing here because serendipity would have it that our cards are still in a cyclic relationship, but also a mirrored relationship. Okay, so that that was just chance, but focus on like cutting cutting this in half now like that. Okay, so if you look at it, our cards are the same number of cards from the outer edge, like fourth fourth from the outer edge, also fourth from the inner. So we say that they're in a mirrored relationship. If you imagine like reflecting this across the center. Now, really it, it could have been, so we probably should just do this because um, serendipity led to kind of a confusing outcome. Um, what could have happened and probably would have happened if we tried it again is they would look like this. Okay. so. If you come in three from the end, we land on our respective cards. So that's what, or they're the equal distance from the center as well. So that's called a mirrored packet. 
okay? When you have such an organization, you have something called the stay stack principle. And I'll add a link in the description below to the stay stack principle. Um, what it means is for each divisor of the packet size, the packet size here is 14 now, uh, two divides evenly into 14. That means you can deal it out into two piles with random stacking decided by the spectator, and it won't change the fact that our two cards are in a mirrored relationship. Okay, so let me just show you that. Hopefully they're not also in a cyclic relationship. They aren't, uh, just so we don't confuse you by just having sort of bad luck on our side here. So how are they in a mirrored relationship? Well, they're both fifth from the outer edges. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Or if you look at the center, which is right there, they're third from the center, third from their edge there. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, so they're still in a mirrored relationship. Now, why that's important is when you have a mirrored packet and then you perform a second Klondike shuffle, because we've only performed one, it will bring those, quote, mirrored pairs together as one. So your card and my card are guaranteed to be brought together, okay? Because it was mirrored, okay? And of course, normally what would have happened is your card would be face down, right? We'd see mine. And then however you want to reveal it from here, but we know that my card and your card have been partnered together in this swing dance performance. And so if you want to reveal that their card's not there, that's fine. And then eventually show, wow, that is amazing. How in the world did we end up as swing dance partners after all of that? Well, it's mathematics is why. So thank you for watching. And I encourage you to take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.